January 12th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Genesis chapters 22 and 23 from the Old Testament. Sometime after these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, Abraham replied. God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah. Offer him up there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will indicate to you. Early in the morning, Abraham got up and saddled his donkey. He took two of his young servants with him, along with his son Isaac. When he had cut the wood for the burnt offering, he started out for the place God had spoken to him about. On the third day, Abraham caught sight of the place in the distance. He said to his servants, You two stay here with the donkey, while the boy and I go up there. We will worship and then return to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and put it on his son Isaac. Then he took the fire and the knife in his hand, and the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, My father... What is it, my son? He replied. Here is the fire and the wood, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son, Abraham replied. The two of them continued on together. When they came to the place God had told him about, Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next, he tied up his son Isaac and placed him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand, took the knife, and prepared to slaughter his son. But the Lord's angels called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham! Here I am, he answered. Do not harm the boy, the angel said. Do not do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God because you did not withhold your son, your only son, from me. Abraham looked up and saw behind him a ram caught in the bushes by its horns. So he went over and got the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place, The Lord Provides. It is said to this day, in the mountain of the Lord provisions will be made. The Lord's angel called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, I solemnly swear by my own name, decrees the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you and I will greatly multiply your descendants so that they will be as countless as the stars in the sky or the grains of sands on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the strongholds of their enemies. Because you have obeyed me, all the nations of the earth will pronounce blessings on one another using the name of your descendants. Then Abraham returned to his servants, and they set out together for Beersheba, where Abraham stayed. After these things, Abraham was told, Milcah also has born children, to your brother Nahar. Uz, the firstborn, his brother Buz, Kemuel, the father of Aram, Kesed, Hazo, Pildash, Jidlaf, and Bithuel. Now Bithuel became the father of Rebekah. These were the eight sons Milcah bore to Abraham's brother Nahar. His concubine, whose name was Ruma, also bore him children. Teba, Gaim, Tehash, and Maica. Sarah lived 127 years. Then she died in Kiriatharba, that is, Hebron, in the land of Canaan. Abraham went to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. Then Abraham got up from mourning his dead wife and said to the sons of Heth, I am a temporary settler among you.
Grant me ownership of a burial site among you, so that I may bury my dead. The sons of Heth answered Abraham, Listen, sir, you are a mighty prince among us. You may bury your dead in the choicest of our tombs. None of us will refuse you his tomb to prevent you from burying your dead. Abraham got up and bowed down to the local people, the sons of Heth. Then he said to them, If you agree that I may bury my dead, then hear me out. Ask Ephron, the son of Zohar, if he will sell me the cave of Machpelah that belongs to him. It is at the end of his field. Let him sell it to me publicly for the full price so that I may own it as a burial site. Now Ephron was sitting among the sons of Heth. Ephron the Hethite replied to Abraham in the hearing of the sons of Heth before all who entered the gate of his city. No, my lord, hear me out. I sell you both the field and the cave that is in it. In the presence of my people, I sell it to you. Bury your dead. Abraham bowed before the local people and said to Ephron in their hearing, Hear me, if you will, I pay to you the price of the field. Take it from me so that I may bury my dead there. Ephron answered Abraham, saying to him, Hear me, my lord, the land is worth four hundred pieces of silver, but what is that between me and you? So bury your dead. So Abraham agreed to Ephron's price and weighed out for him the price that Ephron had quoted in the hearing of the sons of Heth, four hundred pieces of silver, according to the standard measurement at the time. So Abraham secured Ephron's field in Machpelah, next to Mamre, including the field, the cave that was in it, and all the trees that were in the field and all around its border, as his property in the presence of the sons of Heth, before all who entered the gate of Ephron's city. After this, Abraham buried his wife Sarah in the cave, in the field of Machpelah, next to Mamre, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. So Abraham secured the field and the cave that was in it as burial site from the sons of Heth. God, I, I still remember the turning point in our relationship when you asked me to give up my favorite son. <laughs> you know that I'm not a parent, except to a rabbit and a hedgehog, but... I had always imagined, like I think a lot of us do, what the things were that I would grab out of my house if there was a fire. And I had a whole mental list in my head that that included my pets and pictures and, and some things I really loved and probably my computer, my laptop. Um, but there was a running list in my head of what I would grab. And I still remember that one night I was laying in bed and and the moon was just right that it was streaming in through the windows. It was so bright that night. And I smelled something that smelled like smoke. That something was burning. And up until this this evening, that particular night, <sighs> You had been doing some amazing work on me. Uh, just what I'd spoken about before, you'd been taking everything away from me. Uh, the job I had at the time, the house I was living in, people around me, different situations, just everything was, was being taken away from my life that, that was causing and interfering with me being able to see you. And as I'm lying in bed that night, and I smell the smoke. And my mind went to that list, God. That list of things that I would take in case, for some odd reason, that my house was actually on fire that night. And for the first time, there was nothing on that list. The only thing that mattered to me anymore was my relationship with you. Nobody was taking that away. Nobody could take that away from me. 
I had been sealed with your Holy Spirit, and I was your child, and you chose me. And the only thing that mattered in this entire world was you. There was no more Isaacs on my list. There was no more testing of things I had to give up. It was just you and I. And I remember being so excited, partly because my house wasn't burning down, but also because there, there wasn't anything on my list anymore. And I'm so incredibly grateful and so blessed, God. that you are what is on my list. And I know it doesn't mean that I don't get tested again. And it doesn't mean that I don't make false idols out of other things in my life, whether it be TV or computer time or, or different activities. <sighs> but you're going to come into all of our lives with that question with that test. Really? Do you really love me more than everything else in the entire world? Are you truly obedient and humbled before me before anything else in this whole world? Or does your husband come first before me? Do your children come first before me? Does your work come first before me? Do your material possessions come first before me? Or am I first? God, I love being second. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being my first and my only. You know my favorite verse is John 3.30. That you must become greater and I must become less. And that is a verse I try and walk through every day with. It's on everything I own, I swear. <laughs> so thank you for that night. Where I smelt the burnt offering and I was getting ready to go down the list of everything I would grab and I realized that everything I ever needed I already had in my heart <laughs> thank you God I love you so much thank you in your son's name we pray amen